Hello and welcome. Today we're doing a question from Leak Code called Reverse Bits. It's an easy, we're going to jump right into it. Reverse bits of a given 32 bits unsigned integer. That's it. That's our problem. And we have a note here. These bullets are mainly for Java, but we're going to be implementing this in Python. So we should be good. Basically, all it's saying is there wouldn't be much of a difference for an unsigned or signed bit representation. So example one, we have input n with a bunch of zeros and a bunch of ones. We're going to take that and we're going to reverse it. So n here ended with 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. So for us, we're going to start with 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. And explanation, the input binary string, this n over here, represents the unsigned integer, this. So we're going to return... 964 something, which is the binary representation of that input flipped. And example two, we have almost all ones. We're going to reverse all of that. And all we're doing is returning that reversed n. Okay, so the problem statement is pretty easy. We're given an input that is a 32 bit unsigned integer, and we want to reverse it and return it. How are we going to do that? Okay, say I have the following example, 1011, as my input n. What would this look like reversed? Reversing this, this would be 1101. And for example purposes, I'm going to be using a 4-bit integer instead of the 32 one, just because this is easier to work with. So what I'm doing, again, with my input n, is I'm taking every single number here, and I'm going to add it to the beginning of another number. And I'm going to do the same with my other bits. I'm going to add this again to this number over here, then 0 and 1. So let's say I have another number called reversed n. And this is going to be initialized to 0. Now I want to traverse every single bit in my n. So 4 in range 32. Now this is just a placeholder. We don't really care what index we're on because we're going to be using bitwise operations. That's just why I'm just adding a dash here. So we're going to be going through all 32 bits, and I want to get every single bit one by one, starting from the end right over here. How do I get that last bit? The operational and. I'm going to be ending my number with one. This will let me have the very last number because everything else is just zeros, right? So one ended with zero is zero. Zero ended with zero is zero. One ended with zero is zero. One ended with one is one. Everything else we don't care about. We just want this last bit. You can think of one as sort of an identity operation when it's applied as an and because one and one would give us one. And zero, if this was a zero, ended with one would give us a zero. So we're going to get whatever is in this last digit over here. So the last bit is going to be n ended with one. Now, what do I want to do with this last bit? I want to add it to my reverse end that I'm going to be building up. Now, to get this last digit, we did a bitwise operation for an and. And to put it into my reverse end, I'm going to do the exact opposite. I'm going to apply an or operator. And why is that? So right now, my reverse end is zero. If I or it with a one, so if I'm going to be oring it with a one, I'm going to get a one. Now, if I was oring it with a zero, I would get a zero. I'm going to get whatever I have in this bit. So if I am oring it with this bit, I'm going to get whatever is in there. So reversed n is going to equal reversed n ORed with the bit I get. So now we're basically putting the bit we got into reversed n. Now we want to do this for all of our other bits, right? We just applied this to that first bit. What about the other bits? Now we don't care about this last bit anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to shift my n over to the right. This way, if this was a one here, if once shifted, we are basically getting rid of this bit over here. And now our new bit that we're going to look at is this one over here. So n is going to be shifted to the right by one. And again, we want to do the exact opposite for the reversed n. So right now, our reverse n would hold the one that we just had. What we want to do is we want to shift this to the left. So now this is going to be one zero. That way, once we go in again, we can add whatever bit we have and build up that way. 
And we want to do this before we actually add our bit. I'm going to be adding it up here. So to go over all of this, what we're doing first for our reversed N is we are shifting it over to the left by one. So this is going to be something like this. Then we are getting that last bit from N. So say our N was 1011. We just got this one over here and we are adding it to the reversed N. So now the reversed N holds one as its rightmost bit and we shift N over. So now we look at this one over here. We would go back in this loop and repeat the same thing. We move this over by one. We get this bit, so we get this one. We apply it to our reverse N and we move our N over by one again. And we're just going to keep building up like this to then eventually return that reversed N. So return reversed N. Now, if we do want to condense our code a little bit more, we can rewrite this. So instead of doing it here, I will just do n and one get rid of this line and we're just setting reversed n twice over here so instead what i can do is reversed n equals reversed n shifted by one or with our n plus one over here like this and i'm going to rewrite n as well so n is going to equal itself shifted over by one so once I go ahead and run this code, it is accepted and I can go ahead and submit. And it is accepted as well. Now before leaving, let's just run through an example because that way we'll be able to see what's happening line by line. Okay, so to run through an example, let's say our N again was one, zero, one, one. Reverse N is going to be zero. Now we're going to be looping through for 32 bits. Again, we're going to truncate this to say four. Now reverse N is going to equal itself shifted over by one. So zero, zero, or with N and one. N and one is going to be just one because we're just getting this bit over here once we apply an and one to it. So zero, zero, or one is just zero, one. And now we shift our N by one. So N is now one zero one and just so we remember what that original number was i'm going to write it up here one zero one one but the n we're working with right now is one zero one so we go back into this for loop and now we perform the same thing again so we're going to shift this by one over here so this is shifted and we're going to or this with n and one n and one what is this bit over here is a one so oring this together zero one zero or with one is just going to be zero one one we shift n once more and we're back in our loop we do the same thing again we shift this by one and we apply the n and one now this time zero and one is going to be zero so once we or this zero one one zero or with zero is just going to be zero one one zero so this stays as is and we shift this again we're back in the for loop again we shift it over by one what is one and one that is just one so once we apply the or over here one or zero is going to be one and again the other digits will remain unchanged because when we're oring it with one basically what we're assuming is every other bit here is zero and we're just going to or these together so these will just stay as is but since we are oring well this was zero and this was one these two together this last bit will take place of that bit we got from n so this is now going to become one over here. And this is what we end up returning at the end, which makes sense because one zero one one was our input and one one zero one is our reverse output. So we just went ahead and solved reverse bits. If you have any questions, of course, let me know down below. If you like this video, give it a like and subscribe. And as always, I will see you in the next one.